G'day everyone. Well, rumours of my passing have been greatly exaggerated. Well, not that much, came close to it, but I smacked that reaper around the head with a big stick and told him to go and f*** himself. So I've had multiple surgeries just of late, so I haven't been doing any work in the shed whatsoever, but I have been doing something else. So anyone who um, has owned or does own an 80 series Land Cruiser would know that the biggest bane of your existence are these things. These bloody things. They are the window master control switch. They're, every single one of them is buggered. Uh, they are absolute junk. They're cheap, they're nasty, and they just do not last. I'll open one up and I'll show you why. Crap falling out of it. Okay, that's the insides of them. Basically, they're all the same or very, very similar. Depends which factory they were made in. The problem with these things is these two relays here. These two relays are 10 amp relays and they control all of the power running to all of the windows. And they are nothing more than a 10 amp bi-directional relay. That means they control all the power to all the windows. So if you ever try to use two windows at the same time to save a little bit of time, you're gonna burn those relays out. They're only, they're a 10 amp relay. Well, they're rated at 10 amp, that's what's written on them, but whether they are actually 10 amp, who knows? These things, they just crap the bed all the time. Uh, they're, they're only between, say, 25 and maybe 50 bucks a piece. None of them are any better than the others and they're all based on the original Toyota design, which quite frankly, just doesn't cut it. So while I've had this extended downtime where I haven't been able to do any physical work in the shed, you know, after surgeries, it takes a long time to recover, especially as you get old like me. Anyway, what I have been able to use is the old scon. So I've decided I'm gonna make my own set of switches and make them work as best as I can and actually maybe improve upon the, um, the original Toyota design, hopefully. So I've been hard at it, writing some code. So I want my logic to be stable. It's gotta be stable. I'll put a lot of hours into, um, in, into this code, trying to work it out, make sure it's stable. I have tested it once. I'm about to rewire and test it again. I've pre-wired a bit of stuff. I haven't wired up the logic yet. Uh, how this is going to work, and this is for testing purposes only. So these four pairs of LEDs represent the windows up and down. These two relays represent the central locking on off. Oh, lock, unlock circuit. Everything's going to be controlled by these relays. So instead of having two bi-directional uh, relays for up and down, I'm gonna use one relay for every single function. So one window will have two relays. So one relay for up, one relay for down. These are 10 amp relays. If these prove to be not capable of de delivering the uh, amperage that I need, I can use those relays, that relay bank, as an intermediate relay bank and um, use them to switch a higher capacity relay up to say 30 or 40 amps, which will be more than enough. I would just like to use these simply because of uh, space constraints and I wanna make it so it goes into the place, into the spot where the original ones came out of. Well, that's the plan at least. So let's see if we can make this work. These first four switches are the up and downs for each window motor. This last switch is for the central locking and this is the passenger window lockout switch confused i am okay so what we've got a representation of here is that is the window up and down switch for the driver's window the white goes to ground left and right go into pins two and three on the input come out um with of the logic it tells pins 22 and 23 to what to do. So they then come across to here on input one and input two. Press the switch. 
Relay comes on, relay turns off. Relay comes on, relay turns off. Then we look at the corresponding LEDs. Okay, that, uh, that re represents power to the window winder motor. That works. So logic for window one works. Let's see if I can make it work with all. Um, I don't know whether I'll show you the wiring up, maybe just do a little time lapse, maybe. It's gonna take a little while. <laughs> There's a lot of stuffing around with it. All right, so I've just got to do that a couple more times and it's um, yeah, exactly the same process. It's pretty slow. Uh, so I'll just turn the camera off and we'll come back once it's all together. Here we go. We have a working bench test prototype. This proves the logic works. And now let me show you what's happening here. If these LEDs light up, it means everything else is working. So window one, up, whoop, up, turns itself off. Window down, turns itself off. These are currently on timer. I'm going to use a resistance recognition for the real thing, but these are just on time at the moment in milliseconds. Window two up, window two down, window two up, short press turns off. Fast change while, well, yep, that works. So, the um, interrupts are working for the up and down, which can be a problem within the within the logic of the um, the, the mega. But I've worked that out. So I've got all the the other ones are working. Yep, fast. Can I have two windows working at the same time? Yes, I can. Can I have three windows working at the same time? Yes, I can. I probably need to extend my timer to be able to prove it, but that doesn't matter. I understand what's going on here. Now, I've got this. This is my uh, passenger window lockout switch, as you'd find on... Um, on the factory style items or the aftermarket items. So we'll press that. Window four doesn't work. Window three doesn't work. Window two doesn't work. Window one turns on. Repress the switch, turn it off. Works. That works, that works, that works, that works, that works, and window one works. These two represent the central locking, lock and unlock. So, momentary press comes on. I've only got it on for half a second at the moment. Um, I could change that, but for the purposes here. So that's locked. That's unlocked. If I press the lockout switch, does not affect the central locking. So I'm pretty happy with that. I think that proves my logic is nice and stable. Um, now it's just a matter of put it together in a form that will actually work in the vehicle. Um, that's not in this video. So everything I've shown you there is going to need to fit into something like the size of this. I'm gonna actually make my own mounting setup so I actually have a little bit more space to play with. But ideally, I want it to be plug and play. <clears throat> then we come into the door. There's a bit of space there. That This is the loom that I need to be able to plug into to make this thing just plug in and, and work. I've got to identify what all the wires are, uh, and then design and make it all fit. And hopefully, it's not going to be too bulky. It may be slightly different to what's original, but seriously, that's the price I'm going to have to pay to make this switching system 
window winders reliable because, well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, all the aftermarket stuff and even the stuff direct from Toyota, which you're paying an arm and a leg for, is junk. See you next time. Bye.